I think Dan Campbell's comments after the game are pretty telling. They're not satisfied with the backup quarterback position. It's something the Lions fans have been saying forever, that they need a better backup quarterback, a more viable option. The question you have to ask yourself if you're Dan Campbell and if you're if you're Brad Holmes is how much of an upgrade do you want? You know, are you willing to go and, and get someone who's gonna that you might have to trade for, give up a resource to get? Do you want to go that high for somebody? Or are you simply looking for somebody else that's gonna get cut that you think will be an upgrade? Which is probably what I would do. And I don't think it's hard to do. I don't think Blau and, and, and Boyle have both played at a very less than pedestrian level so far in the NFL in, in preseason games. Not just this year, but go back to last year. I, I'm not impressed with either of them. I don't think either is a high ceiling. I like Blau better than Boyle, but that doesn't mean that Lions can't get better at, at the backup quarterback. They can do it easily. I think there will be a number of quarterbacks that we're going to hear that get waved and we're going to go, hmm, well, that guy sounds better. Hmm, that guy sounds better, and go ahead and do it. Now, I think it's a little risky if you're going to wave both guys. Um, I, you, then you're you're really committed to doing it if you do that. Now, you're committed to doing one of two things: either picking up a waiver wire uh, quarterback, or you're committed to no, nope, I'm giving up a resource, a seventh round pick, a sixth round pick, and I'm going to get somebody else. So, let's start with this: if they are going a different direction, if they release them both, which I can't imagine they do it now. They might be saying right now, okay, we need to mine the waiver wire or make a trade to get somebody better than these two. But we, if, if, if I'm sitting in that room right now and they are, they are making decisions as we speak down at Allen Park, Dan Campbell said, you know, the conversations will go up to noon. You can't pick up somebody on Tuesday and, and say they're the backup for week one, can you? I mean, you do have the extra week. Well, because they have to learn the whole playbook. And if you actually are trying to win a game, is somebody off somebody who's waived from another team going to give you a better chance than a David Blau who knows the playbook? And, but, and, and let me be clear on this. That doesn't mean Blau would be here for the whole year. It would be sign your waiver wire guy or your trade guy go, or trade for a guy. And then keep Blau around until you know this guy has enough grasp of the playbook. Like even if, and that may come before the first game. But you, you see what I'm saying? It's, no, I, think I, it's, I, I think it's a. I don't want to make the presumption that a guy with six practices that's waived from another team would be able to perform against Philly if asked to do so. That that guy would be better than David Blau who's been in this offense for, well, I mean, it's Ben Johnson's offense, but has been in this offense for at least the entire training camp. Sure, but are you going to make your decision based on that alone? Uh, I mean, what do you mean by make my, what decision? A, a decision to, to to hang on to Blau based on, the, well, because I don't think, I'm going to pick up a backup quarterback as well in, in the waiver wire, but I don't want to go into it with just that guy. I need to have Blau as a backup backup. So, I, I, you know, the deal would be, I would yes, I would keep David Blau around until I know that this okay, this guy can run the offense that he is just parachuting in yeah. on with you know, less yeah. than two weeks to go, and then and then once I know, then Blau gets released. Yeah, but does I guess, that make sense? No, I understand what you're saying, and, and I guess my point is, I don't care. I if if I find somebody I like, and I don't want to carry two quarterbacks anyway, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my backup quarterback in the next two days, figure out which waiver wire quarterback it's going to be. And yes, he's going to be handcuffed and trying to learn the system, but I don't care because it's one game. If emergency break glass situation happens where, oh my God, Jared Goff just got hurt in the, in the second series of the game. Now I got to go to my backup quarterback who's been here for all of a minute. I mean, it's, I understand that's a problem. I, I, that is a problem, but it's a problem if Goff gets hurt, period. It's, it is so a I problem. I don't care. I, 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 I want the extra roster spot for somebody else uh, well, here's, that I can use on maybe one of those extra wide receivers or extra running back, so I'm carrying just the two quarterbacks. I feel like we're having, we might be having a parallel discussion of what's going on right now in Allen Park because if, if Goff gets hurt in the opener, I do not want to pull the plug on the entire season. No. Especially if Goff gets hurt, knocked out of the game, but it'd be back for week two. I don't want to just throw away the game by putting plugging in waiver wire pickup quarterback option C, 
who doesn't have a grasp of the playbook when a David Blau might give me a better chance to win that game, get out of there, escape with a W, and then Goff is back for week two. I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. And, and, and what I'm saying is I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me for the because it's it's you're looking at what percentage is that it's going to – I'm playing the percentages. I'm expecting Goff to be healthy and be able to make it through one week, and then all of a sudden becomes, hey, 13 days that the quarterback has to learn the system. Well, Goff stays healthy for week two. Hey, it's 20 days, and, you know – you move on that way. So I'm not I'm not worried well, about the one game that it could. I understand your point. Yeah. And and I, I, I was kind of leaning towards that this morning before I came in. Well, I'll wave Boyle, I'll hang on to Blau, and then I'll wait and see what waiver wire quarterbacks there are, and I'll try to sign one or bring one on board, and then I could always wave Blau at some other point, but I'd rather just – I'd rather have an extra roster spot for somebody else yeah, and just go I, with – so you and I differ on that. I, I keep Blau until I'm sure that the guy that they acquired. Now, the question is, the guy that they acquired can run the offense right. more efficiently than David Blau. The question is, who becomes quarterback option C? <laughs> Backup option C. If option A is Blau and option B was Boyle, who's option C? So the go big candidate is Jimmy Garoppolo. Do you do you go after a quarterback that is still trying to start in this league? That you can guarantee you get him with a trade. And there also might be some cap implications with this as well. Nobody believes that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be on the 49ers roster. If Jimmy Garoppolo gets waived, it, you can put in a waiver claim on him. Um, and you'll likely get him. Yeah, if if because Jacksonville's not going to pick him. But up. then I think you have to pay him what his contract was. If I know understand this, whereas if he clears waivers, but then he then he has a choice and you can sign him for whatever. Um. But is I'll, there any scenario where you go big after Jimmy Garoppolo? No. Me, no. Yeah, because it's the cost is too high. So. It 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 strikes me that. I mean, we, we would talk about it because it is a possibility. It's funny. Every uh, beat writer on ESPN that covers each team put together their 53-man 50-man, 53 man roster. So today, everybody on ESPN.com has their projected cuts. Mm-hmm. And the guy Ken has one, too. Yes, and all the local beat writers did. Yep. But I'm just saying, ESPN, they got every everybody. Yep. So I could go look at San Francisco. I could go look at other teams. And we went through and kind of made a list of quarterbacks that might be about to come available. Um. And the guy for San Francisco wrote, it's almost impossible to see Garoppolo being on this roster, which I would think that San Francisco is currently feverishly trying to trade him. Oh, they are hoping to God somebody calls him and says, all right, we'll take him off your hands. And as, as much as anything else, I mean, they, of course, they want the they want the resource of draft picks in return, but they would love to be able to just drop him for the, or, or trade him for the uh, – the cap space too. Yep. 